the United Nations, North Korea, and the 38th parallel. That's right, it's time for the top 10 messed up things that happened during the Korean War. Number 10, not till the fat lady sings. Most people would be delighted to know that a war is over. War sucks, it's expensive, costs lives, and uh, come on man, it just sucks. Officially, North and South Korea have not signed a peace treaty. That's right. Although they both agreed to an armistice in 1953, on solid paper, there's no surrender, which technically means they're still at war. This sounds bad, but it can't be, right? Not as if tensions between these two could ever be high. It's not as if they're scheming of ways to undermine each other and just waiting for an excuse to open the biggest can of whoop ass at a minute's notice, right? Everything's fine. I don't know if everything's fine. Number nine. Up and down. The Korean War was a great military success and everyone went home happy. Very nice, great success. Uh, just kidding, actually, it didn't really solve anything. What's so messed up is everyone just kind of ended up where they started. North Korea had pushed into the south, almost making it all the way south, when the very effective UN organized a police force of multiple nations mostly US, and punch their way back up to the 38th parallel. But maybe we better go further, ballsy General MacArthur Douglas said to himself, admiring his own reflection in the mirror, pushing their way all the way up to the Chinese border, where 250,000 Chinese soldiers helped the UN force by pushing them back down to the 38th parallel, putting everyone in the same position they were in the beginning. It's almost as if war was the pointless cost of life. Nah, that can't be right, no. Number 8. Nuclear Threequel This one is kind of scary, honestly. So, during the Korean War's impression of snakes and ladders, game of borders, and front lines changing like the wind, General MacArthur was getting frustrated with the progress, or lack thereof. He wanted a quick solution. Something that would bring a swift end to the conflict, all while flexing a little muscle in the process. Being a big fan of how the US annihilated two cities in Japan in the previous war, he proposed that America once again just start dropping nukes fallout style. While this was being considered, it was ultimately a no cal zone situation, as I like to call it, for the US and the UN. Soviet Russia had just figured out the recipe for nuclear bombs and would not hesitate to send one their way in return. The US had lost its nuclear monopoly and ushered in the age of mutually assured destruction. And thank god they didn't to be honest. I love playing the fallout games, but that doesn't mean I actually want to be in them. Nah thanks man, I, I'm good. I'm good dude. Number 7. I need a hero. When we all tell stories, we like to tell stories with heroes and villains, beginnings, middles, ends, rising actions, climax, and conclusion. Bad guy hurts good guy, good guy perseveres, and he beats bad guy. Credits roll as the hero walks off into the sunset. Now I'd like to tell you that the Korean War was a tale of good versus evil. But it's more like bad versus evil. Korea was split between communist north, supported by China and the Soviet Union. The south was supported by the UN and the US. Each has their own dictator, wanting to unify Korea in their own image. Yes, the communists were not very nice, but the right wing dictator installed by the US was arguably just as bad. So in short, a super awesome time to be in Korea. Number 6. Tootsie Slide this one goes out to all the fans of MacGyver, you're gonna love this one. So during a very cold segment of the Korean War known as the Chosen Mountain, nicknamed Frozen Chosen by the very cold marines that were stationed there, temperatures were below negative 25 degrees celsius and morale was lower, well actually their ammo count was. So the marines radioed in an airdrop for Tootsie Rolls, which was just a code name they'd given to mortar shells. Apparently the radio operator receiving this message did not understand this. And the actual chocolate candy Tootsie Roll was airdropped to the Marines instead. Yeah. Not wanting to waste this processed American delicacy, Americans went full MacGyver and discovered that once chewed and placed in bullet holes or in things that needed to be filled, the treat made for a decent enough repair. If women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Number 5. Stranger Danger We all know if there's a van that rolls up to your neighborhood and there's a man inside offering free candy, it's gonna be a bad time. Well, North Korea might have had the biggest and baddest van in the neighborhood, as it's estimated that 84,000 people were kidnapped during the war. That is so many people. Why was North Korea putting so many faces on the side of milk cartons, you ask? Well, it was mainly a forced repopulation tactic, which again is so messed up, I can't even begin to tell you how wrong that is, but also may have been the beginning of a super secret spy program, where North Korea was interested in having biracial spies, making it easier to 
infiltrate the enemy. Just one of many nefarious activities North Korea has been up to. There is no spy program in North Korea, and I, I am not saying, I, I am absolutely saying this of my own free will. Please do not send help. Number four, not actually a war. While there were a lot of bang bang shooty shooty killy killy during the Korean War, technically it wasn't really a war even though it feels like one. Being referred to as a police matter, yeah. The US sent a lot of troops to fight this, not war. Which in case you're wondering how that's possible, you can take a look at Congress. As Congress never declared war, setting a new precedent. Although after the millions of dollars spent, the loss of thousands of soldiers on each side, plus the UN force being comprised of 16 other nations. I'm not exactly sure how it's not a war. That's like me saying, I did not do my English essay because it's not an English essay. It's a two page opinionated piece that should be four pages, but I didn't read the book and just use cliff notes. Sorry Mrs. M. I mean, come on, can you blame me? Have you ever actually tried to sit down and read Lord of the Flies? Not in a school setting? I called the chief last night, you know what? He said it wasn't it. Number three, Top Gun. Ask any military history guru or anyone who's got a thing for it and they will tell you that after World War II, military tech was about to get a little crazy. On September 8th, 1950, something a little spicy happened in regards to both military and aviation history. The world's first all jet dogfight took place. Americans in F-80s and communists piloting the infamous MiG. Despite a movie that I actually think isn't very good, this wasn't great for the Americans. Yes, they did end up shooting down the enemy, but it was clear that the MiG was outperforming the F-80. Forced American aviation to come up with something just a little bit better. Come on guys, you can do it. Number two, just in case. So it's been years since the Korean War. They've been split in half, DMZ is there, everything's kosher, right? Well, not exactly. If you follow the news in recent years, you know that North Korea has been doing some unsavory testing with ballistic missiles. However, what some people may not know, and it's kind of messed up when you think about it, is to this day there is still a large number of US soldiers stationed in South Korea. 30,000 to be exact. A remnant from the Korean War, but something that many would consider to be a necessity given the hostile nature of the North Korean regime. Hopefully things stay in a stalemate and don't escalate. We got enough problems on our hands right now. On a side note, there's also a large concentration of US soldiers in Japan as well. Not directly related to the Korean War, but they are in close proximity just in case uh, anything sneaky happens. Okay. Number one, big boom little changes. World War I changed lives. It dissolved century old empires, completely redrew the map. World War II doesn't happen without World War I, and it was so bad, the whole world swore to never let that happen again. Heck, even wars from centuries ago had more cause and effect. The Korean War is very different in this regard. Like previously mentioned, the communists were bad, but the capitalists were not much better. While the lines may not be as blurred as some wars, the outcome was completely different to what most people were used to. When World War II ended, there was cheering in the streets. When the Korean War ended, there just wasn't much to show for it, besides a tragic loss of life, debt, and a new theory about communism that would literally make the exact same thing happen in Vietnam 15 years later. Seriously, the comparisons are uncanny. It's like the exact same thing. Crazy. Anyways guys, that's gonna wrap it up for me today. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe here at Bumblebee. I've been your host, Big Ched. If you like me, you wanna see more of me, my links are down in the description. And as always, stay sweet, my little honeybees. I hate that book, dude. I hate that book. It sucks. It's just, just a fat kid with glasses and it just sucks. He dies. Spoilers.